Hello programmers, welcome back to my channel. Today we will discuss about link list which is another implementation of list interface. We will see what is the underlying data structure used for link list, how the elements are stored, retrieved and modified with example in coding. We will also see how we can make the list synchronized as by default the list is unsynchronized. So without any further delay, let's start. So what is a link list? It is a class which is a member of Java collection framework. So it uses a doubly linked list to store the data and also it inherits the abstract list class and implements two different interfaces. One is list and the second one is DQ. Now let's see a few properties of linked list. It maintains insertion order. That means in whatever order the data is getting added to the list, that order will be maintained. It can contain duplicate elements also. So this property also similar to the array list that we can add duplicate elements in the linked list as well. Then it is a non-synchronized. So in case of multi-threaded environment, we need to synchronize it externally. Otherwise, uh, there will be data issues. Manipulation is fast in case of linked list because there is no shifting required in case of any data deletion from the list, which is there, which is not there in case of array list. Whenever we want to remove some element from array list, a lot of data shuffling needs to be done. That is why in case uh, a lot of manipulation is required in your data, in those cases, linked list will be the best option to use. It can be used as a simple list stack as well as queue because it is already implementing BQ also. The iterators returned by this linked list is fail fast. That means if uh, an iterator is obtained from the list and there is some structural modification happened after that in the list, at that time those iterators will throw concurrent modification exception. Now let's see what data structure is actually used to store the data in case of linked list. So as we have already discussed, uh, it is using doubly linked list. So what is actually doubly linked list? It's a linked list which where the navigation is possible in both ways. Now let's see by a diagram how a doubly linked list should look like. So it will have three different components where two are the links and one part contains the data. The first link, it contains the memory address of previous element and the final or the last link that contains memory address of the next element and the remaining component will contain the actual data. So suppose this is a link list where A, B, C, D are stored. So for the first component A, uh, the previous link that will be null because it is the first component. So it does not have any previous component. That means its first link will be null, but it's the next link. It will point to the memory location of B. So in that way, uh, the components in link list are need not to be stored in the contiguous form like we have to do that in case of array list. So they can be anywhere in the memory, but they will be linked using uh, these two links which are present in the double link list. So similar to the first element, for the last element, the next link will be null because as it is the last element, so there is no next element present after that. Now let's see what operations on the linked list are available in Java. So first one is insertion. So that is a standard insertion that will happen at the beginning of the list. Then we have a standard deletion similar to the insertion. The deletion will begin uh, at the beginning of the list. Then uh, addition to these methods which were already there in the array list, we have few more methods available like insert last. We can add an element at the end of the list also. Uh, similar to that, we can delete the last element also and we can insert after some specific element as well. In addition to these, we can provide the key itself or the object itself so that it can search in the list and delete that specific element from the list. Now enough with the theory, let's do some hands-on. Now let's see how to declare the link list and add few elements in that. So here, uh, this is the way to declare a link list using link list and then we provide the type of data we want to add in the list. And after that, using dot add method, we can simply insert the elements to the list. Now we will not be discussing all the methods which are common to array list and link list because those we have already covered in our list and array list video. In case you want to know more about them, please do check out the playlist. You will be able to find the video there. I will also provide the link in description. So now let's see few methods which are uh, unique for link list, which are not available 
uh, for the array list so here we can see one method add first so what it will do it will insert the element which we are providing to the first place in the list similar to this we have a add last as well so if we want to add some element in the end of the list then that will be uh, added using add last so if i execute this program orange will be appended in the beginning and kiwi will be appended in the end so let's execute it so here you can see orange has become the first element and kiwi has become the last element next we have offer method so the normal offer with the string as an input so what it will do it will add a specific element that we are providing to end of the list then we have offer first and offer last so as the name suggests offer first will insert the specified element to the front of the list and offer last to the end of the list and here you can see mango is added to the end of the list next is a set of peaking method so here we have three different methods also uh, similar to the offer one so what peaking is it will retrieve the element but it will not make any changes to the list that is it will not remove that element from the list it will only do a lookup here just like peaking inside the linked list so the normal peak it will uh, start it will give you the first element of the list then we have two different method peak first and peak last which will give you the first and last element respectively so i am expecting orange to be printed so here you can see using the peak um, because by default it will give you the beginning element of the list so it has printed orange here similar to peak we have one more method which is poll so this method is somewhat similar to peak but with some additional uh, action because it will retrieve the elements in same fashion as peak does but what it will do it will remove the elements which we are trying to pull so if our requirement is like if we want to uh, remove the element whatever elements we are reading then we can make use of poll method here and similar to the other methods also it has three different variants one is normal poll which will start from the beginning of the list then we have poll first and poll last so let's try to uh, poll the last one so after the execution of this statement it should remove mango from the list and in the end i'm printing the list so mango should be removed from the list so here you can see mango is removed from the list so suppose we have a requirement in our application where we need to implement the multi-threading. So what we need to do for the collection framework entities like link list or array list, uh, as those entities are not synchronized, so those will be at the risk of uh, getting manipulated by multiple threads at the same time. So how it can be avoided? So we can synchronize the link list or array list externally as well. So this is how it has to be done, the synchronized list that we need to create. So we will be using collections class, which is available in uh, java.util package. And it has a method synchronized list, which will take in uh, a list uh, as an argument and it will return a synchronized list. So in that way, uh, in case of multi-threaded environment also, uh, this list becomes synchronized and we will not have data related issue. That's it for the link list video. In our next tutorial videos, we will continue with covering all the components of collection framework in Java. If you think this video was useful, please do like, share and subscribe and provide your feedback in the form of comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.